You know, towards the end of a game or practice when your lower back gets tight and a little bit achy and when you come off the ice, all you want to do is stretch it out, and I know you do. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to show you what it needs instead so you don't even get that feeling in the first place. This is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I am an exercise physiologist who specializes in off-ice training for hockey goalies. And I know that you get that achy low back feeling because you're emailing me all the time asking for stretches to do to make it feel better. And although those stretches might give you some temporary relief and you know if you've done them that yeah, it feels better for a little bit and then it feels tight again or when you get out of bed the next day, it's back tight and achy and you feel like an old grandpa getting out of bed. And that's because stretching isn't really what it needs. The reason your muscles uh, are getting tight and achy is because A, they're not strong enough in the right way uh, for being a goalie. And that's, so it's that they don't need a lot of brute strength is they need a little bit more stamina. Or other muscles in that same chain of muscles is called the posterior chain. It includes your back extensors, your glutes, your hamstrings. Other muscles aren't doing their job, so your lower back is taking over and it's doing a whole bunch of work that it's not really supposed to do. So obviously those muscles are getting overworked, overtired, and as a result, they're gonna tighten up and get cranky. So today I'm gonna give you four lower back exercises that are gonna help fix that. Uh, and if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you two back exercises that you're probably doing thinking that this is, you know, how to, you want to make your back strong and ready to go, but you really shouldn't be doing them at all. And before we get into it, I'm going to remind you, this is not a physiotherapy clinic. This is not your physiotherapy appointment. I am not a physical therapist. This is not meant to treat a back injury or back pain. So if you're having back pain that's getting worse or it's not getting better over time, you need to book an appointment with a good sport physical therapist who can do a whole assessment and figure out what's going on with your back specifically. Because again, these exercises aren't designed to treat back pain. Uh, I think they're gonna make you feel better if you're just getting that sort of tightness and achiness that we get at the end of a game. Uh, but if you have something else going on, these exercises could be exactly the wrong thing. They could make your back feel way worse. So if you're having back pain, you need to get it checked out. For the rest of us, let's dive on in. When I worked as the exercise specialist at the Fowler Kennedy Sport Medicine Clinic, um, I spent probably at least a third to a, qu a quarter to a third of my day teaching people this next exercise. And if someone's appointment was 30 minutes long, we might spend the entire 30 minutes working on this one muscle action and still not get it. So um, it's going to be very simple muscle wise. You're not going to feel the burn, <laughs> but it's going to be very hard on your brain. And you have to be extremely picky because otherwise you're going to be like, oh yeah, I got it and you're not gonna get the benefit. So the exercise is a TVA with a leg lift. So a TVA is the transversus abdominis. You've heard of that, right? It's one of those ab muscles you train to get your six pack ab. Oh wait, no, it isn't. <laughs> and you've probably never heard of it. So there are abdominal muscles, you know, our torso works in all different planes. And so um, if we think of our torso as not just our abs, but as a, as a circle, as a column, we need to strengthen all the way around that column. And there are muscles in there called the transversus abdominis where their fibers run this way and they kind of wrap around and they uh, integrate into what's called the thoracolumbar fascia, which is a connective tissue sheath that um, sort of helps support your lower back. So it's almost like a muscular girdle or a muscular weightlifting belt. And too many of you spend time working on your abs, your rectus abdominis, these muscles in the front, you know, the, the six pack muscles. And so they get overdeveloped and they want to kind of do everything and help stabilize, but that's not really their job. Um, their job is sort of flexion. 
So when we work these transversus abdominis, their job is to support that muscular tube, to work with your back and your front and your sides to keep you strong and stable. So that's where we're gonna dig in. And I'll tell you right now, if you spend tons of time working on your crunches and have overdeveloped rectus abdominis, this is gonna be really hard for you because you're, all you're gonna do, wanna do is flex your abs. Uh, it's gonna be humbling for you. You're gonna get pissed off because you think you're doing it. Uh, but you're not. So let's just be patient uh, and get it right. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna sort of teach you a really simple way to, to try to find the right activation. So this isn't pretty. It's not gonna pump your ego, but we're gonna do it anyway. So this is how, this would be my go-to if someone was having trouble in the clinic getting a sense of it. So we're gonna get in our hands and knees position with a nice neutral back. And then we're gonna imagine that we just drank a full jug of Kool-Aid. So uh, we're gonna let our belly, keeping our back neutral, so we're not gonna sag our back, the Kool-Aid isn't that heavy. We're gonna keep our neutral back position, but just let our belly hang down as far as possible. Wear a baggy t-shirt when you do this, so you just, you don't see, it's much better. So here's my belly hanging down, full of Kool-Aid, oh boy, cherry Kool-Aid, delicious. Then what I'm gonna do is, without, changing my back position, and without trying to sort of hard flex my abs, I'm gonna just try to lift up that Kool-Aid. Let me show you again. So here's, here's my Kool-Aid belly hanging down. Put my hand there so you can see. Whew. Ouch. Now I'm gonna just draw up, and I'm gonna lift that Kool-Aid, if you can see that with my hand. So it's not gonna be a big motion. Um, I'm not trying to suck in, I'm not trying to suck in my gut and make myself as skinny as possible. I'm just trying to draw in slightly. Okay, you did so well on that. Let's flip to our back. Okay, so we're gonna flip to our back and we're going to um, use our fingers to sort of feel the surface of our stomach. And it should be, it should be loosey goosey. When I would do this in the clinic, it would be great because it would all usually be dudes, but they'd, they'd just be flexing, you know, and I'd be like, hey, relax your abdominals. And they'd be like, I, I can't, that, that is relaxed. You know, and it's like, just, you're not pressing anybody. So just try to, you know, make it like a bowl full of jelly and feel what that tension feels like. And then what we're trying to do is without changing that surface tension, without flexing our abs at all, we're trying to just pull our belly button towards our spine a little bit. Or another way that we, another cue we would use would be sometimes like, if you were in the, if you're taking a pee and you're in the middle and you stopped your stream of pee, turn on those muscles too. Those are the muscles of your pelvic floor. So if you stop your pee, draw in a little bit, but still keep those surface muscles quiet. So that'll be really hard because a lot of you without realizing it will inadvertently flex. And if you're flexing and if those muscles get hard, you know you're not doing it right. It's not, you know, it's not that, oh, my muscles are just so strong. You're, you're not turning on the right muscles. So we'll hold our P, we'll draw in a little bit. Then now you really have to use your fingers again to feel that there's no change in tension. You're gonna slowly lift one leg up and slowly return it to the floor without any change here. So when I was monitoring this exercise, what I would do is I would put my hands on their stomach and I would feel the muscles um, and then I would close my eyes. And if I couldn't tell, you know, when, usually it's like initially when you lift off, it'll be fine, fine, fine. And then I would feel a little poop, like, you know, a little tension there. So if I could have my eyes closed and not feel any difference, then I knew they were doing it right. So it's not a, like you don't have to try to contract anything. You know, the right muscles will contract to help stabilize, but you don't want to over contract the wrong muscles. Now, th so this will still be hard, even though it's like muscularly, it's so simple, it's basically effortless. It'll still be hard for some of you to get. If it is hard, then take off your shoe, um, 
you know, have a sock foot on a smooth floor or whatever, and you can just do a little slide out. So you can slide your foot. I got to spin so I can show you, but you can just slide your foot out along the floor and then slide your foot back up. And that's a little intermediate step. So just doing a slide. So you have to go slow. You have to be super picky when you do this one. Um, you might find too that, um, we're just gonna do four on each side with that slow kind of three seconds up, three seconds down, or four seconds up, four seconds down tempo. You might find that you get the, the first two really, really well, like I got this. But then the third one, when you try to initiate, it, it keep pops pops, you can't get it back, then just stop the set. Because again, it's a motor pattern, you're trying to practice, uh, and, and I don't know if it's that neural pathway gets fatigued or what it is, but then you lose it. Well, then you're just practicing compensation patterns, trying to get the right movement, but not using the right muscles or not stabilizing properly. So when that happens, just, okay, on to the next one and keep working on it till you can build up to four repetitions on each side. So if that's a new one for you, if you got some value out of it, hit the like button right now. Once you get so you can do uh, those lifts and you can do four on each side and it's perfect, then you can drop a comment below and let me know and I'll uh, put on my list to give you a progression or to make that one of my movement Mondays a progression from alternate leg lift. And again, don't worry if you don't feel it. It's not really, a, it's not a hard exercise. Um, it's, it's more your brain than your muscles. So that's, that's totally fine. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. The next one you're going to like way more because you're going to feel it. You're going to feel burn. <laughs> um, and you're going to need a stability ball. Now, if you don't have a stability ball, you could probably, you know, do it off the edge of your bed. If your legs can hang off a little bit, pile up the sofa cushions, you know, get, get a little creative people. So for this one, you're going to need a stability ball. If you're using a stability ball, it should always be a burst resistant stability ball. And that means it'll say somewhere on it, anti-burst or burst resistant. If you have one of those super cheap stability balls, it feels like it's made of rubber. You know, you can see this is, this is pretty solid ball. Uh, if you have one of those ones, that feels like it's made of rubber probably you should dump that and find a little bit better quality one. But we're gonna go belly over the ball. Now, fun fact, some people in my experience in 25 years as a strength coach, when they go belly over ball, it makes them feel unwell. It, you know, it, it pushes on something that makes them feel like they're gonna barf for a little bit woozy. So if that's you, this exercise is not made for you. Just leave it out because we don't want you feeling woozy. We definitely don't want you barfing. So I'm going to get here. I mean, I'm going to keep my nice neutral back position. And then I'm just going to do an, um, an alternate leg lift. So I'm thinking about squeezing my butt cheeks, my glutes, because one of those things I talked about it at the start is that, you know, you might be using the wrong muscles or your, or I should say your back might be doing work that should be done by other muscles in that posterior chain, other muscles in that posterior chain, your glutes, really powerful hip extensor can help hold you in that forward lean when you're in your stance and your hamstrings. So I really like this exercise because it trains that entire chain, hamstrings, glutes, and your back extensors, but it trains your back extensors more as a stabilizer, giving them a little bit more stamina work, whereas your glutes and your hamstrings are the movers. So as I was saying, think about squeezing your glutes, even reach around to feel that, you know, those muscles are tight. Your back's going to stay just in the exact same position and you're going to extend here and you'll hold for about two to three seconds, come down other side two to three seconds, come down. So that's the starting level. You would do eight on each side and see how that feels. Where do you feel it? Do you feel your glutes working? Does your back start feeling tight uh, and fatigued like it does when you're on the ice? If it does, then two things. 
Make sure you're using your glutes. Maybe decrease the volume a little bit to only six on each side. Make sure you're squeezing your glutes. And maybe don't lift, try to lift your leg quite so high. Sometimes we don't have good awareness. So we, you know, instead of just lifting to a neutral position, we're trying to lift way up here. And then we have to get hip extension and that's going to use our low back. But if everything feels fine, like, yeah, I don't really feel much of anything. Then we'll go to a up, up, down, down. So I'll go up using my glutes, up using my glutes, and then down, down, up, up, down, down. And I would do four leading with each leg. So four leading with my left and four leading with my right. If that feels fine, we're all good. Then we'll go for a double leg. And remember, we're just coming up to make a straight line. We're not trying to hyperextend because that's, that's gonna hyperextend your back. So here, hold for two to three seconds, down. Notice I'm just hinging at my hips. My back isn't changing position. So I'm not rounding and extending and rounding and extending. I'm stabilizing as I do hip extension. And again, you would do about eight of those with a two to three second pause at the top. Another one to help strengthen the chain and build some stamina in your back extensors is the bent knee glute bridge. I know you've seen, you know, some of these exercises and you're like, oh, that's too easy. I don't, you know, I need something harder. A lot of this is just about building the stamina. When you're on the ice, you know, you're wearing your chest protector, your helmet, but it's not like you have 275 pounds hanging off your back that you need, you know, strong, strong muscles. You just need to be able to hold that load for a sustained amount of time. And that's what gets your back feeling tired and achy. It's just, it's fatigued. It's, it, it can't hang on. So it's just tightening up, you know, trying to shorten itself to hold on for dear life. So we'll go into this bent knee glute bridge next. Okay. So you're going to lightly brace with your abdominals as if you're going to get a little smack in the belly like that. You want to make sure, so my knees are bent, my feet are on the floor. I want to make sure that everything comes up together. So I don't want to kind of roll myself up and then roll myself back down. I want to be stable in my torso, extend at my hips, and come just to make a straight line. So I'm not trying to get sort of in this high jumper position. I just want to make a straight line. And I'm going to hold that for 10 seconds. And again, I'm going to think, hey, where do I feel this working? You know, do I feel my glutes or even reach around and poke at them. Are they rock hard or are they still kind of jiggly? If they're jiggly, then think with your brain, hey, can I tighten those? Okay, yeah, now they're rock solid. I'm gonna keep that there. Um, and are you feeling it in your low back? Are you feeling it mostly in your hamstrings? I'd like you to really think about trying to feel it in your glutes. So experiment with yourself. What do I, what do I have to think of or concentrate on to feel it mostly in my glutes? I'll come down. I'll just tap down and then right back up. Everything comes up together. I'm keeping my thighs parallel. I'm not letting them splay out. I'm holding for 10 seconds and I'm going to do five repetitions. This last one will definitely be new to you unless uh, you're interning pro or we've worked together privately. Um, and it's definitely a more deep stabilizer exercise for the back. So we're trying to get um, muscles called the quadratus lumborum <laughs> working. It's sort of a contralateral stabilizer. Probably the multifidus is a little bit involved. Multifidus is sort of a segment by segment stabilizer um, that's, that goes along sort of your whole back. Um, so it's a lip, again, this is gonna be another one that doesn't really feel like much, but if you pay attention, you should notice there's a little bit of tension in your lower back that just feels different from what you feel when you're doing sort of typical back extensor exercises. So um, I have just an AirX pad. You could have a telephone book. You could have a yoga block, something that just raises you a couple inches off the floor, raises one knee a couple inches off the floor. And then 
I'm putting just one knee on that. So I have one knee on that Air X pad um, and then my hands and my other knee are on the floor. And I'm in this nice square um, kind of quadruped position. So I'm not sitting back, I'm not extended out. I'm just, you know, my hips are at 90, my shoulders are at 90. Now I'm just imagining that there's a string attached to the top of this hip that's pulling that straight up to the ceiling and down. So what some of you will want to do, a lot of you will want to do, is kind of side bend as you do that and kind of do a little hip hike. But you have to stay strong in your torso, lift straight up, just to make it about even with the other knee and straight down. Come up, pause, and down. And notice I'm not shifting at all or moving my hips other than just that rotation to come up. So I'm also using muscles on the outside of my hip. With that one, you'll do about 12 repetitions. You'll pause for about two seconds at the top. But again, really think about using the proper clean motor pattern. I know that TVA one can be super frustrating. So don't feel bad if you don't get it right off the hop. Probably 95% of the goalies I've shown it to struggle to get it. And it's even worse, like I said, if you have really strong crunching abs, it's, it makes it even that much harder. So be diligent and stick with it. Keep in mind that your uh, low back can also take the brunt of it if your hips aren't moving the way they should be moving. Um, so sometimes they talk about people having a second bum. <laughs> you know, they use their back extensors rather as hip extensors because their hips aren't um, don't have the mobility or the stability that they need. So, you know, if you think, oh, maybe my hips need a little bit of work, you can always download that free butterfly challenge app that I have. I'll also put a link in the description below. Um, but, or you can just go to your app store and search butterfly challenge. It's a 14 day um, goalie specific flexibility program that usually gives people like two to five inches wider butterfly flare in, in two weeks or less. So you can always check that out and see not only will it give you more range through your hips, but probably take some load off your back as well. And while we're at it, now would be a fantastic time to hit the like button. Uh, and while you're doing that, you should probably stand up because sitting, like I'm doing right now, is the devil for your hips and your back. So stand up, banish the devil while you're just standing there anyway. You may as well hit subscribe. If you've hit subscribe, you might want to hit the bell because you know what the bell does. It lets you know as soon as a new video has been uploaded, which is typically Wednesday afternoons, but sometimes I hit you with a little bonus. So let's take care of that work first. Then I'm going to hit you with two low back exercises that you should not be doing. So the number one exercise that you might be doing already to try to strengthen your lower back, even though it kind of makes no sense, is crunches. <laughs> because I don't know, I don't know when, but somehow maybe in the 70s, like it was like, oh, if your back hurts, you need to do crunches and that'll give you a stronger, I don't know. Uh, so let's stop doing that because crunches um, are repeated spinal flexion. I've done a whole video on this and I'll try to find it and put a link in the description of why we don't crunch. Even when I train professional players, Olympic athletes, they don't crunch and probably we haven't, I haven't used it in maybe 10 or 12 years. But, um, Here's the Reader's Digest version. Crunching is repeated flexion. Based on scientific research, biomechanical studies, repeated, chronic repeated flexion causes microtrauma to your discs in your back, in particular in your low back. And so it's, it's very much like hip impingement. It's that, oh, but my back feels fine. I do crunches all the time. My back feels fine. I'm a goalie and, um, you know, my hips feel fine until they don't. So it's one of those problems that develops without any symptoms, any symptoms, any symptoms until it's a big, big problem. So, you know, you're just, it's very much like, I think of it like a wire coat hanger. I can bend a wire coat hanger like this, like this, like this, like this, no problem, no problem, no problem, snap. Okay, now it's in, ba in a bad way. So instead of doing that, what you could do is uh, a stability ball, stir the pot. You'll still get that same burn, but it's going to help sort of 
teach you to use those muscles as stabilizers, not have that repeated flexion, cumulative wear and tear on your back. Here's exactly how to do it. So get your old stability ball, get in a nice straight line plank, and then you're just going to stir the pot. And the smaller the circles, the easier. The bigger the circles, the harder. But the key point is your back shouldn't be moving at all. You also shouldn't be, lots of people kind of round their back because they're trying to like lock in their abdominals and again, put them in that shortened position. So just keep that neutral position. Usually we go about five each way at a nice kind of slow controlled pace. Bonus number two. Another exercise you need to stop doing. And this one really isn't your fault because you're at the gym, you're cruising around, you're trying to do the right thing. You walk by that machine and it's like, oh, low back machine. And you look at the little picture and it shows like it strengthens these muscles. And you're like, that's exactly where I get so tight and achy at the end of a game. I'm gonna get on that thing. And you get on that thing and it's got like a pad, you know, here and you get in it like that and then you do like a, almost like a reverse of a, of a crunch machine and you're like yo, know, you start off maybe using 40 pounds you go in but then you know the next day you're like ah, that's not that bad so you move the pin I do 60 pounds and then you go and you get up to like 120 pounds you're like my back is getting so strong but again that's not strengthening the back your back the way you need it to be strong it's, it's building muscle strength, but it's not building the stamina that you need to hold that ready position. So it's teaching you sort of non-functional strength and it's not using any of the rest of the, that chain we talked about. Your glutes aren't involved really. Your hamstrings aren't involved really. So it's almost like taking one piece out of the chain and making it disproportionately strong when maybe part of the problem is it's already trying to do too much work and now you're strengthening it so that then maybe it's going to try to do even more work, which over time is going to have a, a detrimental effect because it's not sort of working in the right ratio. It's not working with the rest of that chain, if that makes sense. So what, what should I do instead? Well, I've given you some exercises you can do instead. Another exercise I love, and it doesn't do the same thing, but I think it's a great sort of functional core exercise is a single arm farmer's carry. So that is super simple. You grab a dumbbell just in one hand. So, you know, and, and it can be pretty heavy. You know, it might be like a, a 40, 50 pound dumbbell depends on sort of your training level and your strength and all that. But if I was doing it in the gym, I would use a 40 or 50 pound dumbbell, carry it in one, just one hand and then walk, you know, about 20 meters with it in one hand, about 20 meters with it in the other hand and just stay nice and safe. So don't like lean away to sort of hold the weight. Just try to stay nice and square. Try to walk nice and straight. So now our muscles on one side and that'll be in our back and our front using our obliques. We'll have to hold and stabilize in that position as we're doing a, a movement pattern, which in this case is walking. And then we would switch to the other side and carry that way. So another really nice exercise that you can add into the mix. So that's what I have for you today. Um, you know what, do me a favor and let me know in the comments below what other areas kind of get achy. So maybe what gets achy towards the end of a game? What gets achy after a game? What do you feel the next morning when you get out of bed? What feels a little bit locked up? Drop it in the comments below because I'm always looking for, you know, um, making videos that are important and relevant to you. So if you guys tell me, what you're feeling, what gives you trouble, then I can make a video about it and you'll be like, it's like she's talking right to me. It's like she made this video exactly for me because it did. And don't forget to hit that like. Every time you hit the like button, I get a cashew. So that's pretty cool. Um, so <laughs> hit that like button and I will see you next time. Oh, sick. That's a good cashew. Thanks.